Almost all companies have a desire to move to the cloud these days, but sometimes conventional lift and shift is just not possible. But there's a middle way. Managed co-location in Google data centers. You heard me. They call it Google Cloud VMware Engine. Is this genuinely a new long-term business strategy from Google? Or could this be just the next phase in exterminating the data centers once and for all? If you're new to the channel, this is where we talk about everything around enterprise IT. And if you like the video, why not give me a like and subscribe? That keeps the channel going. Thank you. Do you remember the days when there used to be only private data centers and that's it? Simple times. But then somebody came up with the idea of a public cloud and everybody rushed there. This public cloud was supposed to kill all data centers. But did it? Not. Exactly. While traditional players like HPE, Dell EMC, NetApp and such have been betting on hybrid future already for years, it took the new kids on the block, the hybrid scalers, AWS, Google, Azure and such, far longer to admit that they didn't manage to take out data centers after all. On-prem and cloud need to coexist. Fortunately, for the end users, in 2020, there's a plethora of options how to implement a solid hybrid strategy. Firstly, you can run your applications and store your data in a traditional way on-premises by building your own data center with compute, storage and networking for ultimate control over all aspects of your IT. You can pick your favorite components from well-established brands like HPE, Dell, NetApp, IBM, Lenovo, Hitachi, Cisco, and many others. On the other hand, if you want to skip all that technology hassle, you can easily deploy your applications on cloud service providers like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud. Like with all services, there are some compromises. You'll pay a hefty premium for the CSP services and you'll need to accept the security measures, performance figures and SLAs of the CSP. You'll have zero visibility to the underlying infrastructure. This can be a relief or a nuisance, depends who you ask. I've previously talked about the best of both world solution, private cloud where you take the user experience from cloud while staying in full control of your own infrastructure. In many cases, however, a larger scale or a DR site is required. And this is where the hybrid cloud offering from all major hyperscalers come to the picture. AWS was the first one to introduce a possibility to run VMware clusters in cloud data centers back in 2017. I know, dedicated and cloud doesn't really sound right, but Welcome to the hybrid world. AWS calls this service VMware Cloud on AWS or VMC on AWS. Think of it as a managed co-location service in AWS is huge in global data centers with very limited say in the hardware configuration though. Following AWS's success, Microsoft wanted to join the party. And after rather colorful couple of years between Dell, VMware and Microsoft, they finally agreed to deliver the same experience on Azure. They call it Azure VMware Solution. The latest contender in this space is Google with Google Cloud VMware Engine or GVE. I had a pleasure to attend Techfield Day 21 back in March to learn all the details about GVE and I wanted to share my thoughts about it with you. Let's start with the elephant in the room. <laughs> yes, this is having dedicated compute, storage and networking hardware in the public cloud. It's a co-location service 100% managed by Google. So what is the hardware then? Well, hyper-converged, of course. Hardware itself is tailor-made for by Google, I assume, but it has all the familiar industry standard components like Intel Xeon, DDR memory, NVMe storage, and not only the node is VCF certified, it also includes VMware licensing. Interestingly, you can also add storage capacity from external storage. At the moment, NetApp Cloud Volumes is supported, but I'm sure that the list will grow in the future. 
The whole stack with all the hardware, software and licenses is fully supported and managed by Google and if necessary VMware. Monthly fee is flat and all inclusive depending on the plan period and region between around 5 and 10 US dollars per hour. Now here's the catch. You will have to start with the minimum of three nodes, which is the same as with AWS, by the way. So that means to start with GVE, you'll pay anything between 10 and roughly $20,000 per month for the minimum configuration. Okay, so now that you have those three HCI nodes running in the Google data center, you can add this Google cluster as a seamless part of your on-prem VMware environment, extending on-prem to the cloud, kinda. <laughs> it's just like having another VMware cluster in any secondary site. At Tech Field Day, we were told that around GA, the service will be available in three geos, Americas, which is available now, and then Europe and Asia Pacific, each of those having at least two regions. The previous pricing examples were from the US regions, and so it remains to be seen if the pricing in the other regions will follow that pricing. It is definitely not the cheapest way to run your applications, so when would you want to consider an approach like this? If there's a desire to go cloud native, but there are cloud incompatible applications that just simply can't be migrated to cloud, or learning the new skill set required for cloud is just simply overwhelming, or moving to cloud requires inefficient re-architecting, maybe current security posture cannot be maintained in the cloud, or cloud cannot meet audit and compliance requirements. So for companies that are not ready to go to the real cloud, but are compelled by the cloud scalability, financial predictability, operational easiness, Google Cloud VMware Engine could be a pretty good solution. But there are plenty of other colocation service providers that offer the same for much less. So the real question here is, why should you go for Google or any other hyperscaler for managed colocation services? Well, you need to appreciate the Google ecosystem. Otherwise, the additional premium is simply just not justified. See, while you do have your dedicated hardware, it's still running in the Google Cloud, so many of their services are available for you, like identity management, uh, billing, Google Anthos, Stackdriver, and so on and so on. This makes me wonder, is this genuinely a new long-term business strategy from Google, or could they see this only as a stepping stone for their customers towards all-in cloud native? in the hopes of everybody eventually moving away from on-prem. I really do hope it's the former one, for Google's sake. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, if you did, hit like and also subscribe. And remember to hit that bell button to get the notification of my new videos. Until the next time.